here we go. Area of a region between intersecting curves, okay? In the previous example, those two curves um, do not intersect. They intersect somewhere down the line, I think. No, no, probably wouldn't. No, not going to intersect. These two curves never intersect. Example two, so they had to tell us where to cut it off. Example two um, asks us to find the area of the region bounded by the graphs 2 minus x squared, so it's a downward facing parabola, y intercept at 2, and g of x equals x. So notice when you graph these, there are two places here where these curves intersect. Now looking at the graph, it's pretty obvious that it's negative 2 and positive 1, but if this is calculator inactive, you do not know that for sure. How can we find out where these do intersect? What do we do? Set them equal to each other, and we're going to solve. Okay, because if we're finding the area between the, between the curves, it's wanting us to find the cutoff points. Okay? Mm, no. But what I'm saying is this is going to be calculator inactive. They're not going to give you the graph, so you're not going to have that visual. Okay? <clears throat> this factors um, x plus 2, x minus 1. So we do get that x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. These curves equal each other at negative 2 and at positive 1. So that tells us that we are going to integrate from negative 2 to positive 1 because we are looking for this region right here between the curves, this kind of snow cone-ish looking region. All right. Uh, the top function is again the parabola. The bottom function is uh, the linear function x. It's similar to the problem that we just did, but not quite the same. Um, in this case, I mean, uh, I'm going to just rewrite it when I integrate. So negative x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus 2x. And that is being evaluated from negative 2 to positive 1. Not going to be quite so lucky with our computations this time. Please be careful with these negatives. Okay, when you plug in 1, 1 cubed is 1, so that's negative 1 third. Okay, the negative does not get cubed, it's just the number. Okay, minus 1 half plus 2. Okay, plug in negative 2. Now, negative 2 cubed is negative 8, but there was a negative in front of it, so that's positive 8 thirds. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. And it's minus, and 4 over 2 is 2. And then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. All right. Now, <clears throat> my suggestion, don't, don't jump straight into getting a common denominator yet because it's going to be easier to combine with other terms first, and then you can see if you even need a common denominator. You may not really need a common denominator. So distribute that negative, negative 8 thirds um, plus 6, right? Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Distribute the negative, it becomes positive 6. Negative 1 third minus 8 thirds is negative 9 thirds. Still got that negative 1 half, still in. Negative 9 thirds is negative 3. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 9 halves. We didn't have to go into getting a common denominator of over 6. And <coughs> Thanks. Um, did I do that correctly? Yeah, times 10, 10 halves, 10 minus 1, 9, nine halves. Okay. So there are strategies to combining these numbers without calculators. All right. Questions? We good? Okay, third scenario. Curves that intersect at more than two points. Because it happens. Because it happens. Okay. <laughs>
All right, so we want to find the area of the region between the graphs of this cubic function and this squared function. So graphically, let's look at this. It's kind of colored in right here. We're looking at this area right here. Yes, it intersects at three places. Your eyes do not deceive you. Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay, there you go. Thanks. You equate me being the best with not giving you a quiz. Or how about you equate me being the best with the fact that I am teaching you everything that you need to learn for that exam next Thursday. And you are going to be prepared so much that you're going to walk in there and you're going to be like, that was a piece of cake. No, lay my hand down that pillow. Piece of cake. Yeah. Yeah. I like, okay, I'm just about that. No, no, I'm going to, I'm going to Okay, so, there is the, the area of the region that we're trying to find. So, clearly, this does intersect at three places. It intersects here, here, and here. I'm going to keep teaching you know, whoever's paying attention can pay attention. It's great. All right. So we are going to set these two functions equal to each other. Now, you may say, well, this is a cubic function. How do I solve a cubic function without a calculator? Don't freak out yet. Okay? Don't freak out yet because when we get everything on one side, we'll check out what happens. All right? We've got 3x cubed. The x squares cancel, minus 12x is equal to 0. Yes, it's still a cubic function, but factor out a 3x. It's a GCF. Take out the 3x. We got x minus 4. Am I missing something? Yeah, I missed 3 cubes. Okay. There we go. I was like, I'm missing a number. I'm missing a number. Okay. Thank you. 3x cubed. This is what happens when you have to talk to people when you're trying to write. It does not turn out well. <coughs> Said 3x. <laughs> so, we get x equals 0 from the 3x is equal to 0. And we get x is equal to positive and negative 2 when we solve x squared minus 4. Now, one way to not forget the plus or minus is to factor that instead of solving it by square roots. Now, if you can remember the plus or minus, square roots are great. But if you cannot, you need to factor that as the difference of perfect squares. And that way you guarantee you get both of them, the positive and the negative. Okay? So those are the three places where it intersects. Now... <clears throat> Here's where we must be careful. We go from negative 2. Now, the entire interval is at positive 2, but there is a change that happens at 0. Notice, between negative 2 and 0, the cubic function is the top function. The quadratic function is the bottom function. At 0, that relationship flip-flops. The quadratic function is the one on top, and the cubic function is on the bottom. All right, so from negative 2 to 0, we've got the cubic function minus the quadratic function. Don't forget your dx, okay? Plus, from 0 to 2, Quadratic. Y'all will remember that though. <laughs> From zero to two, the quadratic functions on top, so it comes first. Bless you. No, that's when someone's pitiful and can't do their calculus. That you say, bless. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> bless. 
smaller pretty quickly right because some factors are going to cancel and and all that good stuff so we've got 3x cubed it doesn't have anything in common we got negative x squared minus a negative x squared or well, minus a negative adding positive negative x squared plus x squared that don't negative 10x minus 2x gives us negative 12x oh that nifty two terms okay let's simplify the other one uh, we've got negative 3x cubed, negative x squared minus another negative x squared, that cancels. 2x minus a negative 10x gives us positive 12x. Now, does this look somewhat familiar, kind of, sort of? Those factor value problems, maybe? Where they were almost the exact same thing, they just differed by a sign? Yeah, don't forget about those. Okay, I promise you, there will be one on the exam. All right, so let's integrate. 3x cubed integrated is 3x to the fourth over 4 minus 6x squared. We're evaluating that from negative 2 to 0. We're going to have the exact same thing. It just has opposite signs. And that's evaluated from 0 to 2. So when we plug in zero, we're going to get zero. So when we, I can remember math when I was like three, okay? It is the love of a lifetime, all right? It never fades. It only grows stronger. It is my soulmate. It will, it will always be there for me. Distributing that, <clears throat> excuse me, negative in front. We've got negative 3 times 2 to the 4th over 4 plus 6 times, that's the same as, as positive 2 squared, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, nothing cancels, okay? But there are two of them. It's not squared. There are two of them. All right. So um, let's see here. We can add negative 3 fourths plus negative 3 fourths. What does that give us? Negative 6 over 4 to the fourth. Okay. And then uh, we've got 6 times 2 squared plus 6 times 2 squared. That's 12 times 2 squared. Okay. <clears throat> well, again, let's make it things easy on ourselves. Let's assume we're doing this without a calculator. How can we rewrite 4? We can rewrite 4 as 2 squared. So that's six, negative 6 times 2 squared, right? 2 to the 4th over 2 squared is just 2 squared. Powers of exponents. Subtract the exponents. Okay. All right. Now, crunching the numbers in this case is not terrible.